What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another vintage Star Wars market update. We're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to take a look at loose graded figures from AFA or CAS. I can't remember. Maybe some UKG items in there as well. But I also wanted to include loose, ungraded, complete figures as well as vehicles, creatures, stuff like that, just to give people some other ideas in terms of purchasing uh, I've, I've gotten a couple of people that have asked for loose and not graded, complete. And so I want to preface this by saying that I'm going on the assumption that all of this stuff is legitimate. It's not repro, things like that. Um, so let's dig right in. Before I do, i got a couple of things. First, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. For those of you interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, all Patreon members get my videos 24 hours early. It's patreon.com slash actionfiguregrader. There's no like set price. Some people contribute a dollar. Some people contribute 40. So it's just whatever you're comfortable with and you can quit anytime. So uh, that's one. Number two, if you guys have a vintage Kenner Star Wars collection in your hands and you're looking to sell it without paying eBay fees or getting hit with taxes at the end of the year, because eBay does report stuff now to the IRS, any sales over $600 get reported to, to the IRS now. I know several uh, buyers that, that buy collections and they've bought a number of collections, many thousands of dollars from subscribers. You can shoot me an email, actionfiguregrader at gmail.com, and I can put you in touch with a few buyers. I don't charge anything for it. I'm not looking to get anything out of it. I'm just trying to help out the collecting community and uh, you know get stuff sold at fair prices for, uh, you know once you account for eBay fees, and taxes and everything both parties are usually really happy i've never heard anyone who has ended up selling uh, to some of the people i recommend and not been extremely happy i mean i'm talking very happy with prices so just reach out to me by email if you have a collection let's dig right in i think i've talked enough i'm going to start with cib collectible investment brokerage they're affiliated with afa they always have beautiful items for sale nice high grade afa mint on card as well as loose figures we're going to focus on some loose figure sales that were graded, and uh, all of these sold here this past weekend. This was a no COO Stormtrooper. So this would be like the type of thing you'd find on Palatoy Tri Logo cards. Beautiful high grade AFA 80 plus. This one sold for 144.27 plus shipping, but that is a beautiful example of a no COO figure that was released over in Europe. Just a gorgeous example. Just very very light pinkish hue to the limbs which is probably what kept this thing from an afa 85 but give me a break what a beautiful figure um they also had a lily letty afa 50 r2d2 and this is a very common problem the stickers on these lily letty made in mexico r2s always discolor over time but even in low grade like this 50 is uh, they can command big money this was the type b sticker faint blue there's like a darker blue uh, for the eye as well as all the paint apps on the head uh, with a different type of sticker. So there's a few different variations. There's a Regresso, Returno. I don't know all of this stuff, but this one is a gorgeous figure. And I have seen other R2s, and I think CIB just sold one earlier this month that had the darker blue dome. But this one sold for $350 plus $910 shipping. So, you know, again, even in very low grade, uh, these Lily Letty R2s, are, are they command big money. Um, here is an AFA 85 Luke Skywalker X-Wing. And as I mentioned in my what to buy video, somebody had one of these exact same figure, exact same grade for sale for 275. And I said, that was a good buy. You need to buy that because it's worth more than that. Well, this one sold for 301.55. So, uh, clearly I was right on that. This is the Hong Kong AFA 85. It is extremely tough because of all the white paint applications on this figure to get an 85 grade, especially now because AFA is super, super strict with grading. But this one is about as perfect as it gets for a Luke X-Wing. It looks like he had maybe just a little bit of scratching on that right hand there, as you can see. Um, but look at the rest of the paint on this figure. What a gorgeous example of a Luke the emblems were just perfect. Everything was just perfect on this figure. So 301.55 took that one home. Uh, next up, we have a no COO AFA 85 Hoth Stormtrooper. And this is the hard torso two scar COO. What does that mean? Well, this is a Spanish PVP figure. So this was made by the Spanish factory, the later Spanish factory, after Pac merged with PVP. 
they created their own molds and their own figures there. And so they had scarred out countries of origin on the back. So that's got a two scar COO, meaning that both legs on the backs of the legs had scars. There was nothing left of the original Hong Kong mold. So uh, there's also a single scar uh, COO. So, but anyway, this is a Spanish figure, very high grade. That sold for $212. That was a great deal. Great deal. As you can see, the torso on these are known to yellow over time. This is just very faint, very faint. But my guess is that over time, this will discolor because I have one that's like this that is exact same grade and everything, but the, ye but the yellowing happened after grading and it turned a lot darker yellow than this this one is so and i paid you know accordingly i paid the, a fair price for it but i, I think that you're going to find that whoever bought this unfortunately this is probably going to yellow even more it's just something with the plastic that was used by the spanish factory that just does not hold up over time maybe it doesn't i don't know but that is a, a fantastic figure uh, another yak face sold it seems like we've had a lot of yak faces uh, sell here recently. This was an AFA 80 that sold for $690. As we've talked about, a few AFA 85 examples have hit between $1,100 and $1,200. So to get the next two rungs down, you obviously have an 80 plus and then the 80 uh, for $690. That's about fair market value. But this is a, a really nice example, though. I don't know what caused it to only get the 80. I, it looks like it's got maybe just a little bit of scratching on the hands, especially on that left hand there. Uh, but whatever it, it, that is a really nice example of a yak six hundred and ninety dollars plus ten dollars shipping so let's call it seven hundred dollars is the going rate for an afa 80 and as a reference point last year i bought an afa 85 brand new case style just like this and i paid less than this price so uh, yak face continues to go up in price uh he also had this one at cib also had this one the hollow cheeks sand people a very desirable figure uh this was afa 80 uh, we just documented one that was an AFA 85 that sold for a little over $600. I think it was $620, $622, somewhere in there. This one sold for $304. So you're paying less than half the price of an AFA 85 for just an AFA 80. But it's still a near mint figure, and I think that was a great buy as well. So a really nice example. You can see uh, the paint wear around the eyes especially. There's also some overspray on that little... Uh, mouth apparatus that hangs around his neck. You can see the, the silver uh, paint has, has kind of oversprayed there. Uh, the hands look good. The, the bandoliers, everything looks good. I think it's just because the eyewear and because of the silver overspray that it got the AFA 80. It's all just guessing. I have no idea what's running through the minds of the graders, but uh, those are the two most obvious defects that I see. But a, a nice example of the hollow cheeks. Uh, here was another very desirable uh, sand people variation. This is the long eye tubes variation. So the eyes on this one have longer stalks, so to speak, versus both the the uh, no CO. I think the no COO has longer stalks like this. It's not labeled as such, but uh, the regular Hong Kong does not have those longer eye stalks. But anyway, this is the Hong Kong with the long eye tubes. It was graded AFA 80. It wasn't an AFA 80 plus. It was an AFA 80. I apologize if I misspoke, but this was $250 best offer accepted. That's a pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. I don't know what the final sales price was. I forgot to look it up. Uh, finally, I got CIB's AFA 80 plus Taiwan Boba Fett. What's interesting is, and I never, I never noticed this. This tells you how out of touch I am with, with these labels, but uh, they do label the Taiwan Boba Fett as the 1983 variation. Uh, the regular Hong Kongs, they label it as 1979. And I, I think it's because the Taiwans only appeared on Return of the Jedi cardbacks. They did not appear on earlier cardbacks, to my knowledge. So that's why it's labeled 1983 on these Taiwan FETs. AFA 80 Plus, that sold for $222.50. That was a great buy, in my opinion. Uh, in terms of why this scored what it did, I think you got a little bit of wear around the helmet uh, at the very bottom right here. There's also a little bit of discoloration right here on the arm uh, those are the two most notable defects on it you know limb tightness also affects the grade i don't know obviously what the limb tightness was but those are the two most obvious defects just looking at the figure uh, just a little bit of kind of plastic discoloration on that right arm by the bicep and then the obvious wear at the bottom of the front of the of the of the helmet visor so that's what kept that one most likely from an AFA 85, but that's a great buy, 222.50. Uh, next up, I, I'm going to start with some loose, complete vehicles, 
figures, creatures, just to give you an idea of, of some prices here. This was a really nice land speeder, 100% complete. It did have yellowing on that little windshield. So you can see the obvious yellowing there. That's a common problem with those land speeder windshields. But the chrome on the sides looked to be in pretty great shape overall. Uh, never mind. I take that back. This, this, side, this side had some pretty obvious chrome defects, a little bit of scratching. So this one sold for 46 bucks at auction, or it might have been a, a buy it now situation. I don't know. But, you know, this is probably like a 75 grade land speeder, but a pretty nice example. Just a little bit of wear on this, on the, on this side of the, on the left side of the land speeder. Uh, next up was a loose, complete Tuscan Raider. This is the dark brown paint applications, and, uh, but complete with the gaffy stick. Now these gaffy sticks are very commonly reproduced. Uh, so you gotta be careful you're not buying repro there. But it was labeled as 100% original. It sold for $80, $80 Australian, which is about $55 US. So uh, you can see some wear to the back of the figure, the back of the arm, a little bit of wear on the hand there, a uh, little bit of wear on the cape, a lot of wear on the cape. So this is probably like a 75 grade Tuscan Raider. You can see the obvious paint uh, kind of wear on the face there, but that's a pretty big price for like a 75 grade Tuscan Raider. Uh, here was a loose, complete Ugnaught, and you can see a lot of wear to that cape or the smock, the purple smock. So you got to really look at these figures when you're buying loose, complete figures. Number one, to make sure that the accessory is not repro. This one looks original because it's got so much wear on it, but this is like 70 grade condition. It sold for $15.50 plus $4 shipping. Again, I think for loose, complete, ungraded figures, you're much better off going to Rogue Five Toys on Facebook. They always list loose, complete figures, and they're in much better shape than what you're going to find on eBay for the most part. Or if, if they're not in better shape, you're going to be paying a lot less for them. This is a big price for uh, all of the wear on this Ugnaught. But I'm just trying to show some kind of different items. This was a pretty nice-looking Lobot. It was loose and complete. It did have some wear on that right hand there just a little bit. But the rest of the paint looked pretty solid. Here's the back of the figure. Uh, back of the figure looked great. This is the Made in Hong Kong variation. Uh, a little bit of wear to that right hand arm, as you can see on the back right here, uh, as well as down here. But, uh, you know, this Lobot is probably like an 80 grade, I would call that. That sold for $14.99 plus $3.95 shipping. Uh, here was a pretty nice looking example of a gray bodied Hong Kong uh, this is the LFL made in Hong Kong, the gray body, uh, IG-88. This one did not have the hollowed eyes, which I believe all gray Hong Kong IG-88s do not have the hollowed eye stalks. I, I'm not positive on that, but I'm almost, po I'm almost positive. Uh, the one thing to look out for if you're, if you're looking to buy an IG-88 is the black bandolier that goes around his chest. That often does get a lot of wear. This is probably like 75 plus 80 condition. Had a little bit of wear to that black uh, bandolier, as you can see, but pretty pretty nice example and complete with both weapons. That sold for $32 plus free shipping. Uh, here was a beautiful example of a Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight green lightsaber. Had a little bit of wear to that, to that left hand, which is a common problem for the Lukes. It didn't look like he had any nose rub. Uh, this one is the Hong Kong variation, it looks like. It's hard to tell in the photos, but uh, to get it complete with... The cape and with both weapons, that's a pretty nice one. I sold for $104 free shipping. So, um, you know, just another example of a Luke Jedi. Uh, here was an interesting sale. This was the Return of the Jedi Imperial Shuttle. It was advertised as complete. What a massive item. And it looked to be in pretty great shape overall. Um, let's see what it says in the notes. Condition is used. Notice the wings do not center when in the up position. So... Never disassembled. Exterior cleaned with water and toothbrush only prior to the photos. All landing gear works. Loading ramp works. No known missing stickers. So this seller was, was really thorough with, with photos. And, uh, you know, it shows the battery compartment. A little bit of corrosion to the battery uh, compartment. Um, but anyway, this one sold for $375. Best offer accepted. Plus $60 shipping. You know, mint and sealed box, these can command between $2,500 and $3,000. So this was a, a pretty nice example, though, and in pretty impeccable condition overall. Um, you also need to look at that kind of canopy to make sure it hasn't yellowed or has heavy scratches. But that's a really nice example of the Imperial Shuttle for $375, best offer accepted. Uh, here was a Rancor Monster. 
This was loose, complete. Uh, the things to look out for are the claws and the teeth. The teeth can get lots of scratches. It looks like it had some paint overspray on that one big tooth right there. It could be a scratch, probably more likely a scratch if I had to guess. Uh, but pretty nice example. That one sold. Um, you know, I'm getting, I'm sorry, I'm getting the Rancor mixed up with the Wampa. The Wampa is the one where you got to watch out for the fingernails. The Rancor did not have painted fingernails. So uh, it's really just the teeth, you know, making sure that the body doesn't have any kind of major scratches. It looks like above that left eye, it looks like it has a little defect right there. But anyway, that's still sold for $80 plus $14 shipping. So the Rancor is one that uh, continues to command big money. Uh, here is the Leia. The Leia is always expensive, whether it's graded or ungraded. If you've got a loose, complete Leia with the correct weapon, you're going to be paying big money. This one was in near mint condition, it looked like. Really nice example. The most obvious defect is around that eye there. It looks like it's got some scratching to, uh, to the side of that eye. The belt looked to be pretty clean overall, just a little bit of scratching right there. The hands look great. The cape looked fantastic. Let's see the back of it. Yeah, the, the cape was is kind of a blurry photo. You never know if the sellers are trying to play games or not. So uh, it looks like it does have some uh, some kind of defects on the cape. So this is probably at best an 80 grade Leia, assuming again that all of the accessories are legitimate. And that blaster is always, always heavily reproduced. So just keep all that in mind. But th this one did sell for 152.50 plus 920 shipping. So uh, even loose, complete, ungraded. Leia's can command big money. Uh, let's get back to the loose graded figures. I think the rest of these are all loose graded. Uh, this Obi-Wan Kenobi was a dark gray haired version. Hong Kong, AFA 85, brand new case style. Uh, the cape did not sit, sit that well inside the case. You can see it's got a lot of kind of flowing and wrinkling going on there. And I guess that's what held the price down because in the past, AFA 85 loose graded Obi-Wan's can sell for 350, 400, 450. This one sold for 257, 257. That on free shipping. That was a great buy. You know, again, it, it, it doesn't present perfectly because the cape is kind of like billowing out like that. But uh, whatever. That's that's a great price to pay. Uh, next up was uh, I believe this was the No COO. This is the No COO Chewbacca AFA 85, brand new case style. This would be like what appears on Palatoy or Palatoy Trilogo cards. That one sold for 214.50. Um, really nice example. A little bit tougher to find the no COO Chewbacca versus, you know, say the Hong Kong or even the Taiwan. But, uh, you know, this no COO is a really nice example overall. Uh, next up was an, a, excuse me, a UKG 85% made in Hong Kong Luke Hoth. And this was a beautiful example. Uh, no scratching or anything on the, on the binoculars or in the crotch area. Those are the two areas that really get a lot of damage. But this one was a pretty impeccable example. It did not last long in the market. It sold for 170 pounds or 198 US dollars plus shipping. And I was watching this and it sold very quickly. It sold within a couple of days. Uh, next up is one of my favorite figures. This was an AFA 85 uh, Hong Kong COO Cloud Car Pilot. Brand new case style. What a gorgeous figure. Very, very difficult figure to get in an AFA 85. And I was watching it just to see what it sell for. I was guessing 250 to 275, and it blew past that number. It sold for 307, plus 585 shipping. But you know these these figures always command big money. We documented one on CIB, uh, fr from CIB on eBay that sold for over double that price, same grade. So as you can tell, the prices have come down a little bit on these common figures, even in high grade AFA 85, for example. So uh, you know prices are a little more affordable. They're they're still not like super affordable. But uh, versus, let's call it six to nine months ago, where this figure sold for, I believe it was $800. Same grade, same COO, everything. It sold for $800 from CIB. So now it's selling for $307. So keep that in mind. Now, also keep in mind, too, that CIB takes very, very nice high-res photo uh, photos for their auctions. So, you know, that can pump up the prices just a little bit versus, you know, something like this where the photos are not quite as nice. You know, a lot of shading. You can't tell exactly how good the figure is, but I don't know. That's a, that was a nice figure for less than half the price of what it sold for six to nine months ago. <clears throat> Here was a nice little lot of two. This was the PBP Stormtrooper and PBP Biker Scout. 
the Hoth Snow Trooper was the two scar COO European release PBP AFA 85 with the archival case. And then the Biker Scout was the Hard Torso Scar COO AFA 80. Very tough to find that PBP Biker Scout. For both of them together in an auction, they sold for $557. I thought that was a great buy. And I know who bought it. I'm not going to say his name to give him some privacy. But uh, that was a, a great pickup if you needed both of those figures, because, especially the Biker Scout. The Biker Scout PvP figure is very tough to find. Now, keep in mind that that little Biker Scout pistol, there was either a PvP exclusive variant or a Kenner variant that it would come with. And this most certainly was the Kenner variant. The, the, uh, the PvP factory example, just the weapon alone, can go for big money. So I'm almost positive that this was the... Uh, the Kenner variation of that weapon. I can't tell them apart unless they were, you know, some high-res photos. But given the price point, I mean, the, just the just the PBP Biker Scout pistol can sell for more than what this lot of two sold for. But uh, great buy, whoever picked that up, whoever you are. Um, here is the PBP Leather Cape Darth Vader. This is another Spanish figure. Uh, straight 85s for the subgrades, UKG 85% overall. Brand new case style. And again, the, the, the Darth Vader PvP figure came with several different cape variations. There was the textured kind of leather style cape like this one. You can see the texture in that cape. It's, it's just a little bit of faint texture to it. There's also a smooth cape. There's also one that has texture on one side and smooth on the other side. So lots of different variations for these PvP figures. Infinite collectability, collectability so to speak. Anyway, this one sold for 225 pounds or 263 US dollars. Here was another pretty desirable variation. This is called the green-haired General Maydeen. You can see the very faint green tint to that one. It's not labeled on the UKG label, but they are the Taiwan. The Taiwan Maydeens can come with either this greenish hue to the hair and beard, uh, and it's just something with the paint they used. Or there are Taiwans without that, so you can get both. I, I believe there's a Taiwan molded face uh, uh, or this green-haired version. And this one had the UKG kind of updated case style, straight 85s for the subscores. That sold for 59 pounds. That was a great buy. Great buy, $68.99 was the U.S. dollar conversion on that one. But uh, I wish that it said green hair on the UKG label, AFA and CAS do label this as the green hair when appropriate. So uh, I, I would wish that that UKG would would update their labels to to denote that. But it's very it's a very obvious greenish hue to the hair, as you can see there. Anyway, great buy. I think that was a great price. Finally, this was another one in my what to buy video. This is the Russian Oratet bootleg Bosk, and it's labeled as 1995 by UKG. It's really about 2000 to 2006 ish. But uh, a, a beautiful example of the hot pink version. He looks like he is ready for some jazzercise back in the 1980s to a Richard Simmons exercise video. This one was UKG 90%, and it was listed for 125 great British pounds plus shipping, and it did sell for best offer accepted. I believe the best offer that was accepted was about 120 Anyway, just some more data, both loose graded as well as loose, complete, ungraded vehicles, creatures, just mixing it up a little bit for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.